Well, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, I was invited to give uh, a talk on the rectal mucosa. Um, so brace yourselves. Uh, I think it's the first of the sort of the target mucosae that we're going to address today. Um, and uh, these are my disclosures. So uh, I was asked to talk about the, the rectal susceptibility to HIV and STIs, um, what might be some potential interventions to, to prevent that, uh, and to focus a little bit on, on rectal microbicides, an area I've been involved with probably 15 years or so. Um, where are rectal microbicides today, and where might they be going? So let's start off with some anatomy, because um, some people get very confused about the anorectum. But this is a sagittal section, uh, and what you can see is essentially uh, the stratified squamous epithelium of the anal canal, uh, the dentate line, and then above that, the rectum. Um, so, you know, when we talk about anorectum, there are really two very different tissue types. Um, this is shown more dramatically here when you've actually got a histological section of the anorectal junction, and you see the transition from a, a very clear uh, stratified squamous epithelium on the right abutting to a columnar epithelium. This particular sample is very cross-cut, so it looks quite busy. But if I get a pristine section, this is where the problem is. So this is a very well-orientated rectal biopsy, and you can see that, indeed, the rectal epithelium is one cell thick, the columnar epithelium of the goblet cells, and underneath is the lamina propria, which is packed full of target cells for HIV. Um, so what about these target cells? Well, actually, 17 years ago, when I was working at UCLA with Peter Anton, um, we did some very early work looking at these cells, looking at gut-associated lymphoid tissue. And what we showed that in contrast to peripheral blood, the expression of the HIV co-receptor CCR5, you can see, is very significantly um, increased on these T cells. I can also tell you that their phenotype in terms of activation are uh, much higher than peripheral blood mucosal cells. And as Mike alluded to earlier, these cells are very busy. They have the gut microbiome, they have peptides, proteins, all sorts of things passing across the mucosal surface. So they have an activated phenotype. What that means, unfortunately, is they're more susceptible to HIV. And this is where we isolated T cells from the gut and blood uh, and essentially added virus. Um, and what you can see here, the rates of HIV P24 production um, in the GALT T cells compared to peripheral blood. And you see straight away both there is a phenotypic difference and there's actually a replication difference. So the gut is really a very fertile uh, soil for HIV acquisition. And therefore, um, we see both HIV and also, I think, because of the vulnerability of the rectal epithelium, um, uh, a risk for STIs. Um, this is a list, list uh, I'm sure you're very familiar with, of both bacterial, viral, protozoal bugs that will um, entertain venereologists and gastroenterologists. Um, I think the bacterial STIs are clearly STIs. I think the protozoal, there's always controversy. They may be things we used to see in the pre um, uh, pre-effective antiretroviral therapy days, um, but they can also occur in, in uh, um, healthy uh, MSM2. At the bottom in red is a new area, which I think we're just beginning to explore, and this is a concept perhaps of microbi uh, microbial, uh, microbiome dysbiosis, microbial dysbiosis. Um, before I go into that in a little bit, I have to show my slide with the increasing rates of STIs. I like this particular study because it's a study in Montreal where they actually had about 110 MSM who were studied with regular STIs before they began PrEP and then after. So many of the criticisms of some observational studies are not relevant here. Uh, and what you see is, guess what, an increase in STIs, as has been pointed out by many other people. But let's get back to the mucosa again. Well, this is a happy mucosa uh, where we have a well-organized intact columnar epithelium. We have healthy microbiome. Uh, and underneath, we have a range of um, lymphoid cells. If we throw in some STIs, things change quite dramatically. You're probably going to get epithelial disruption. You're going to get a pro-inflammatory milieu increasing. Um, and you may get, either as a result of um, or preceding infection, this concept of dysbiosis. So what do I mean by that? Well, this is data from the group in Barcelona, uh, Roger Paredes' group, and they looked at a very interesting cohort of MSM um, where they took a very careful 16, uh, 16S ribosomal RNA characterization of the microbiome, and they looked at HIV-infected MSM 
Um, but they also had a second cohort in Stockholm. Uh, they looked at heterosexual HIV-infected men, people infected um, via drugs, and looked at the, the rectal microbiome. And to cut a long story short, what they saw was clear differences in the rectal microbiome linked um, essentially to sexual practices rather than anything else. And I've just taken one element of that presentation which shows you the uh, very interesting feature that within the MSM who were HIV infected, there was a predominance of Prevotella species compared to the dominance of the more conventional bacteria uh, family, Bacteroides, in the, uh, uh, in the non-MSM populations. Now, is this just an observation? Does it have any importance? Um, well, before I get to that, uh, there's one word of caution. Um, Colleen uh, Kelly's group in Atlanta have uh, verified these findings, but they went on to do a study then comparing anal and rectal swabs. Uh, and just a note of caution here, that some of these observations do seem to be linked a little bit to which site you sample. Um, so why might we have this shift in microbiome? Well, of course, we don't know yet, but there's lots of potential causes in sexual behavior, multiple partners, uh, parasexual behavior, recurrent STIs. Are there any consequences? Would having acquired this Prevotella predominant microbiome increase your risk? It's said to be pro-inflammatory for, say, let's say, HIV acquisition. Well, I can't give you human data, but I can give you some uh, rhesus macaque data. And this is a very recent study where some investigators at NIH discovered that two colonies that were supplying them with rhesus macaques, the monkeys from each colony had a different vulnerability to rectal challenge with shiv. It's shown in the Kaplan-Meier survival curve here um, that the, uh, the N7 group um, got infected much more quickly. And they investigated and found that actually the GALT mucosa was more highly activated um, in these monkeys. And moreover, as you can see in the bottom quadrant, um, they had a different microbiome. Uh, they did a series of elegant studies thereafter teasing out the relationship between bacterial products and activation of the cells and so forth. I recommend you have a look. But I think this is the first hint that maybe an altered microbiome may not be a good thing, at least for rhesus macaques. So, perfect storm, perhaps, for HIV acquisition, anorectal dysbiosis, increasing STIs, as we've seen, epithelial damage. I don't know if anyone's mentioned yet, but of course, you know, multidrug resistant gonorrhea is another thing we should be worrying about. Um, and PrEP efficacy, I think Mike argued it wouldn't impact it. I probably agree with him if someone's on steady state, Truvada, but if they're tailing off, then I'm not sure. What about interventions? Well, it's easy, of course. We just tell people to have fewer partners and start using condoms. And uh, we know how well that goes. Um, so we can do enhanced STI screening. That's, that's probably a good thing to do as well. Uh, Jean-Michel has been doing work on uh, antibiotic prophylaxis. Um, and we and others have been doing work on microbicides, which I'll finish up with. So what about rectal microbicides? Well, I think you all know that these are products supplied rectally to reduce or prevent HIV acquisition. They can be a gel, they can be a, ju uh, a douche, they can be a, an insert, in fact. So would they work? Well, I always like to show this data from Craig Hendricks's group, these astonishing fused ct spec images. Here's a semen surrogate nestling in the rectum, and here's the effects of a microbicide, implying you might have protection up to the splenic flexure. So that's good, it might work. Uh, and certainly you get similar pictures and, joking aside, very good PK exposure when you use a, an antiretroviral douche. So I think they could work potentially. Um, they certainly can help in animal models. Where's the science? Well, we, as I've said, we have animal model data. We've done a lot of phase one evaluation of different products. Um, and in fact, we went as far as an international um, phase two uh, multicenter study of tenofovir um, gel. But as of yet, no definitive licensure studies, no phase two, three studies. Um, to give you a flavor of where the field is at the moment, um, I turn to the microbicide trial network, who I think have been the leaders in this field. Um, we currently are looking at dipiverine gel uh, in a phase one study in the US and Bangkok. Um, we're also asking the question, could you insert enough gel digitally or on a phallic device, let's say, um, to actually protect the mucosa, at least from a PKPD perspective, which is making the product easier to use rather than an applicator. 
Um, and finally, we're uh, launching a study, the MTN's launching a study um, with the Population Council's uh, Carrageenan MIV-150 product. And interestingly, and not often done uh, in this field, it's a dose escalation study, which I think is very important. And also, we have a hint here that this might be a broad-spectrum antiviral microbicide of activity against HIV, HPV, and HSV, at least in animal models so far. In addition, NIH has been uh, sponsoring two large uh, discovery phase one programs, the DREAM program, Craig Hendricks, Tenofovir enemas, uh, and Kenneth Palmer's uh, rectal gel, um, Grifficin, uh, which is an extremely picomolar potent antiviral, of very broad spectrum activity. So there is quite a lot of activity going on. Um, even in Europe, um, hopefully next year we'll actually launch a phase one study in Poland um, of Rantes, which is a CCR5 antagonist, again, very potent, um, and this will be both a rectal and vaginal phase one safety, single and multiple dose. So that's, uh, that's some activity in Europe, which is nice to see. Many people in the field would like to see a broad spectrum product, and when they say that, they probably mean contraceptive, antibacterial, and antiviral. And I have to say, at this moment, there's a very short list of candidates. I think we can generate uh, a broad spectrum antiviral microbicide. Uh, Tenofovir is one example in a way, pop council product. But when we try to protect against bacterial STIs, that's tricky. And I think the only things that have some potential are probably antimicrobial peptides. And I've just listed two here, which have shown uh, studies um, in animal models and in vitro that they have quite uh, interesting activity against uh, bugs such as gonorrhea. So is it possible to develop a rectal microbicide? Well, I think the main thing here in my last topic was funding. In the absence of ongoing federal funding, I would argue no. Big Pharma could make this happen, but I think the focus is on oral PrEP and injectable PrEP, so may not happen. So to summarize my talk, um, rectal mucosa continues to be a major uh, portal of entry for HIV infection. I think PrEP is a huge advance for the field and to be rolled out as quickly and as broadly as we can, but it does seem to be linked to increases of anorectal STIs. The microbiome is fascinating. It's popping up everywhere in the cancer field, in HIV, um, and I think we need to understand more about that and its role in perhaps mucosal vulnerability to STIs, including HIV. Um, and as for rectal microbicides, we will see. Um, I think there's funding and activity for the next one to two years, but I think thereafter it could be quite problematic. And with that, I'll stop. Thank you very much.